Done. The idea is to, I don't know, it's a way to, to find uh, distinguished elements in a, in a space, in some sense, okay? So, um, um, we, we assume that in, in our set or a space, we have a, a, a notion of, of tangent space, in some sense, and at each point, at each structure, we have um, um, I don't know. It's, it's like a well. It's a, it's a tangent vector. It's a, it's a direction of improvement. I, I don't know how to say this even in, in Spanish, but uh, it's a preferred direction. Uh, we'll see in the in examples that in some sense in in this direction the 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 structure uh, is improved in some sense you you can think in i don't know in a in, a, in a, the gradient of a functional or something like that okay so um as usual we we also have a an, an equivalence relation in the set okay and we uh, denote the the equivalence class of each element in this way okay and so these these three things are are enough to to define the concept of soliton um, which is when the when when the preferred direction is tangent to the to the equivalence class okay so it's um in some sense is what what we are what we are saying is that the, I don't know, that the structure is, is nice enough, okay, in the sense that the, the direction so our, is, is supposed to, to improve is, is tangent to, to its equivalence class, okay? So it's, it, it cannot be improved in some sense eh? in, in, from this point of view. And well, usually the equivalence class is, is given by the action of a group, and if Q is H equivariant, that we will we will assume that every uh, uh, always, then the uh, a structure is a solid only if and only if the whole class is a is a solid uh, is a, a consists of solitons. Uh, so maybe this picture can can clarify what I'm trying to say. Recall that. We are in a very heuristic way, heuristic uh, situation. So imagine that this is the space of structure. Eh? You have a structure gamma here and its equivalence class. Mm -hmm. These this lines in, in color teal, I think it's called the color, are the equivalence classes. And then at each structure, you have this preferred direction, okay? So you have another equivalence class here. And so what we are saying that a soliton is, is, is this, is when, when, when the preferred direction is pointed in, in the, to, to, to stay in the equivalence class. So, okay, it's not improving the structure. Okay. Uh, of course, if if you assume enough differentiability in the in the setting, you you get the flow. Okay. Uh, an evolution equation, which is this, and and so uh, in this general setting, what we are saying is that a, a soliton is precisely the structure which evolves cell similar okay that the the solution stays in the in the equivalence class so it's like you are not getting anything new with this with this flow so of course it's like well these flows are are invented or or considered to to 
to find the, usually the, the fixed points of the flow. And solitons are not fixed, okay? They, they are moving, so they, they, they can be a problem. Uh, they, they, they can stop you in the, in the search for, for, the, for the fixed point. So they, they, they are a problem if you are trying to, to prove, for instance, the existence of, of fixed points. Mm -hmm. and, but on the other hand, if you are looking for, for what would be distinguished or what, 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 what would be the best element, the best element uh, is it can be very useful. Okay, so let's start with that, some I don't know baby examples just to to show the the idea. We have considered the the vector space of n by n matrices, and well, from some point of view, the the nicest matrices are normal matrices okay it's, uh, each uh, a matrix is 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 semi simple if and only if it's conjugate to to a normal matrix matrix and normality is invariant by this this action okay so let's take this this as a as the equivalence class huh? two matrices are considered equivalent if they are conjugate by an orthogonal transformation up to scale. So this would be, I mean, if you, the, the tangent space at the matrix of, of the GLN orbit of the conjugates, of the conjugacy, conjugation class is uh, the, the bracket between A and something. And then if you put that something as, as this measuring how how far is the matrix to be normal? This is this looks like a, a natural preferred direction. And well, what you get is that uh, that A is a soliton if and only if uh, this Q is a multiple of A. So this part is 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 gone of the tangent space. And this is a very nice equation for a, for a matrix. You, it's easy to see that, that then either A is normal and C is zero, or A is nilpotent, but not any nilpotent, a nilpotent matrix satisfying this equation. You have here like the Jordan blocks, which are the, the matrices. Uh, so these matrices are, are the solitons and any orthogonal, con orthogonal conjugation of these. So instead of, of the expected, uh, I don't know, Jordan blocks with one, 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 these are actually the, 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 the nicest matrices, if you want, after normal matrices, beyond normal matrices. And indeed, they are, well, in a in a in a conjugation conjugation class, there is in a nilpotent conjugation class there is a unique uh, is is unique eh? always up to orthogonal conjugation and scaling, but is is unique and and these solitons are are minimal for for this functional measuring how far is a matrix from being normal, okay? So are really the, 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 the global minima on, on, on the whole conjugation class. Okay, for polynomials, <coughs> take the, the vector space of homogeneous polynomials, eh? uh, I don't know, quadratic forms, uh, binary, ternary forms, and in this case, the, the, the role of normal matrices of nice elements uh, can be played by, by harmonic polynomials, right? which are the zeros of the, of the Laplace operator. And then we can see uh, beyond harmonic polynomials, what would be a nice polynomial? 
So uh, <clears throat> consider also this, this action. Harmonic polynomials are, are invariant by this, by this action. And then, uh, well, this is a natural uh, preferred direction. Uh, the, the, the fixed points are precisely the harmonic polynomials. And so we may ask what else? Is a soliton here. And well, uh, it is well known that the space of harmonic is, is, a, is irreducible under the, the orthogonal action. And actually, these are the other irreducible components. And then we have here candidates for, for solitons. And indeed, if, if you take a polynomial here, which is not harmonic, but it's a multiple uh, in this way, then it's actually a, an, a, an, an eigen polynomial uh, of, of this operator. This is precisely the, the eigenvalue. And so it is a soliton. And, and well, it's, it's very easy to see that these are all the the solitons. This is very related with the with the spectrum of the Laplace Beltrami operator of, of the sphere. Uh, but okay, only this and, and, and if you consider the, the, the flow, it's very easy to see that if you if you start, I mean if you start with a polynomial uh, with this projection non-zero, then you will converge to, to harmonic. But if this part is zero, then you will stop by one of these solitons in your way to, to a harmonic polynomial. Okay, let's see a, a more geometric example. Um, and of course, a, a very sophisticated example is plane curves. The set of all plane curves The equivalence we consider is, is if the, the, the traces are, are the same up to rotations, translation, and scaling eh, all together. Um, and so, um, well, let me show. So, what, what's the tangent space of a curve? It's, it's, it's not that easy in this case, it's, 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 it's not only one arrow, right? It's, it's a field along the curve. That's, 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 a, that's a direction, okay? And well, it's of course very natural to, to consider the curvature, okay? The second derivative of the curve, I assume that the curve is, is parameterized by, by arc length. And so the, 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 the curvature, the, the, the second derivative is, is measuring how curved is, is the curve at that point, okay? It's, it's exactly that. And so it's, it's a very natural uh, preferred direction. And as you see, you, we can already see in this picture that this if you imagine the flow, the flow is kind of trying to make the curve convex, okay? To make the curve convex. And if you imagine already a convex curve, then the flow will, will try to, to shrink the curve to a point, right? We can already see that from, from this, in this picture. Okay, so uh, this, this flow is, is, is very famous. It's, it's called the curve shortening flow and it, it, it may be considered, uh, considered as, as the gene of all geometric flows, I would say, right? And some of its uh, nice properties are these, uh, 
all these kind of cur curves are, are invariant by, by the flow by the flow also is precisely the negative gradient flow of the length that's why the the, the name curve shortening huh? so is the is the optimal direction to shorten a, a closed curve this is in the closed case uh, and so what we were guessing is are, are actually theorems so grayson proved that any simple curve first becomes convex and then gage and hamilton not then actually before in time proved that the once it's convex then it converges toward a round, round point that that's that means that it converts to a point, but asymptotically becoming a circle. Okay, which are the solitons? Um, a soliton, from the dynamical point of view, is should be a curve which flows according to this to this equation without losing its shape, right? Just by rotations and translations and, and maybe uh, expansion or, or shrinking scalings. Mm -hmm. So of course, straight lines are, are fixed points. Eh? Straight lines are precisely the fixed points of this flow. And circles, you can imagine that a circle will, eh, will converge to a point and will always be a circle. Uh, but this is a this is not a trivial question. Okay? Are there other solitons? Is is I think it's not very hard to see that the only simple curves which are solitons are circles. And but <laughs> this is a very good question. Okay, and let me show you. you the, the the first example this example was found by by calabi it's called the green reaper and is the unique translating soliton the unique one okay look at the the formula the equation is very simple but okay is is it's is curvature is is like precisely the little wind you need at each point to move the whole thing without losing its shape okay this is beautiful okay we have also these uh, solitons these are shrinking okay so the, the evolution is just the same flower all the time just smaller and smaller okay this is uh, there is a an infinite family hmm, depending on on parameters on natural numbers uh, classified by average and, and longer and the pictures are by hal dorson thank you and okay hal dorson um, uh, finished the, the, the classification of, of solitons in, in 2012. As, as you see, it's, it's, this is not from one century ago, okay? It's, it's very classic, but, um, and it's still a, a very um, a topic, a very ongoing topic in, in, in these times. Uh, so we, I'm, I'm trying to show all the, the behaviors, but for each behavior, there are a list, but the, the complete classification is really a list. Okay. So they are very, very special curves. You have here three expanding solitons, just expands, and this rotates, rotate, and well, you can rotate and expand or rotate and shrink. Oh, this is a 
tennis ball or yin yang, as you prefer. Uh, okay. So, uh, let's start with the talk. Is okay. So let's go to, to a differentiable manifold. And well, okay, so we, we keep uh, the, the setting in, in, in a very general, in, in this slide, uh, take S as, as the set of, of, of geometric structure of, of some time. Uh, I don't know, Riemannian metrics, almost scalar metrics, spin seven structures, I don't know, some, some class of structures. This set is usually a, a, a subset of, of, of a vector space of tensors. Mm? And sometimes it's, it's open. For instance, um, uh, Riemannian matrix is an open set of the vector space of two symmetric tensors, mm? for example. Uh, and well, a, a preferred direction will be some, I don't know, curvature tensor with respect to some connection, you know, uh, the gradient of a, of a natural functional or a Laplacian or, okay, it's, it's, it's again, a, a preferred direction or, or, or direction of improvement. The equivalence will be given by diffeomorphism, but sometimes by a subgroup of, of for instance, if you are considering Hermitian metrics, you have to take uh, uh, holomorphic uh, diffeomorphics, right? Uh, okay, and, and, and so, well, again, these this three, the set, the equivalence, and the direction gives you the, the concept of, of solid. And of course, we can assume that this, this Q is, is natural enough to, to, to satisfy this, this, that is diffeomorphism equivalent, okay? At least for, for these age. Okay, this is a soliton in differential geometry. And, and okay, the, 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 the first example uh, is of course, Ritchie solitons, which the, the name of soliton was used uh, for the first time by, by Hamilton, was, was introduced by Richard Hamilton. And so in this case, you have the, the space of Riemannian metrics, as I say, the, the, the symmetric to tensors. Here you have all the all diffeomorphisms and, and scaling. And okay, this is a preferred direction, huh? to go toward the Ricci tensor. In principle, it's, it's not the gradient of any functional or anything, okay? Um, so it's just natural. But well, in this case, you, the, the flow is, is, the, is the very famous uh, Ricci flow we all know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, introduced by, by Hamilton and okay, used by, by by Perelman as, as a primary tool to, to prove all these very, very important uh, results. Okay. So let's go to, to other, other types of, of structures. Uh, but before, since we, we know how to compute the ta this tangent space, then we get a, a, this formula for a soliton, okay? This is the lead derivative, okay? Of the, of the tensor with respect to this field X, because this is a typical element in this tangent space, okay? And well, uh, here we, we we also have a, a, a flow, at, at least a equation. But, okay, this talk is more about solitons than, than flows. 
uh, for instance, uh, the first problem is, 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 I don't know, maybe your preferred direction is, is, is not defined in flow, that you, you cannot prove existence of solutions. So, but so sometimes you, you will get uh, solutions, uniqueness, short time existence, but sometimes you, you don't. Uh, an example of this is, is uh, the Ricci flow on, on pseudo, pseudo Riemannian geometry that you can uh, study solitons. There are many, many results and papers about that, but you don't have a flow. Okay. So you can, you can use this soliton concept without the flow. Of course, usually most of the times you, you have the, the, the famous flow associated. But okay, so uh, with respect to, to the evolution, uh, a structure is a soliton if and only if it's a self-similar solution. This is, this is the, the concept, huh? that the, the solution starting at the soliton is self-similar. So if you expect it to, to improve gamma with this evolution, you're not, okay? You're not, you're getting all equivalent geometries. Okay. Um, well, you have this, this notion of, of expanding, steady and shrinking depending on the, on the sign of, of this uh, C here, of this constant C. And, and you get this, this, this kind of, of solutions for, for the solitons with these very poetic names. Okay. So let's start with, with, with Chen Ricci solitons. Here, what you, you have a fixed complex manifold. So it's not only M is fixed, it's fixed as a complex manifold. The, the, the complex structure J is fixed. And you consider all Hermitian metrics on M. And then, well, instead of, of all symmetric, you have holomorphic symmetric two sensors. And as I say, be holomorphic diffeomorphism for the equivalence. And well, a, 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 a very natural preferred direction is, is, is the chain Ricci tensor. Okay, this is, there is a connection called the Chern connection, which is the only Hermitian connection. Hermitian means that the metric and the J are, are parallel. And this is the only Hermitian connection such that the, the torsion is anti-J invariant. Okay, so the one one part is, is zero. Uh, okay, so this is, this, this is a soliton. This is the equation for, for a soliton. We also have these uh, pluriclosed solitons. Uh, in, the, in this case, we take the Hermitian metrics such that this condition holds. These are called also SKT metrics, a strong Kähler with torsion. And in this case, you, you, you may choose as a preferred direction the bismuth connection, eh? the bismuth Ricci tensor. This is an, another Hermitian uh, connection in, in almost Hermitian geometry, but this is characterized by having a totally skew symmetric torsion. Okay. And if you fix a symplectic manifold and take the set of all compatible metrics, hmm, um, and of course, take all all everything is symplectic here. Eh? Take symplectomorphisms for, for for your equivalence. Uh, well, Le and, and Wang define this 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 preferred direction, this flow, which is uh, to take the the anti-J invariant part part 
of the Ricci tensor. It's, 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 it's very natural, but I think this is another case that you have traveled to, to get a general short time existence theorem for solutions. But you can, of course, uh, classify and study solitons, remember, without the, the flow. So this is very natural in symplectic geometry. And in this case, you, you don't fix a complex or, 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 or a symplectic structure. You, you just fix M and consider the set of all almost scalar structures. Okay, so uh, everything will be moving here. Huh? So these are the almost Hermitian structures such that the, the omega is closed. So, of course, you, you, you are always in a symplectic manifold, but omega is changing, okay? So it's not fixed, the symplectic manifold. And well, the, the, the vector space of tensors is, is this one. This condition will, 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 make i mean we, we we you need this to 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 stay in the set of almost scalar structures and in this case you can take all the diffeomorphisms because nothing is is fixed and this is the a very natural flow defined by street and Tian. you take the now the you 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 also take the churn connection and the chain Ricci form instead of the of the of the tensor, uh, which is closed, and and then this is pointing. I mean, you you will keep having a symplectic structure, so omega will be closed in time. But then, according to this tangent space you are uh, forced to put as, a, as the one one part the one one part of 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 this this coordinate and then as the anti j invariant part you can put this very natural and so this is the 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 symplectic curvature flow and well for the, the equation for a soliton is actually a, is two equations and well the fact that everything is is flowing is 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 really challenging uh, and of course the, the the classification of complex surfaces is is the main uh, uh, problem um, i don't know motivating all all this the study of all these flows no? And well, let's let's go to some uh, exceptional holonomy. Uh, you have this. I, I'm just giving some examples. There are many, many more. G2 Laplacian solitons. So in this case, you have in the, you are in dimension seven. You take the set of G2 structures, and 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 which is a, a definite three form, in the sense that it defines a. a, a it determines a metric and the volume form. Uh, the set of G2 structure is open in, in, the, in the space of three forms. And well, this is a very natural direction where, where delta is the, is the, is the Hodge Laplacian. And, and well, this is a, this is a solid. And this, this flow was introduced by, by Robert Bryan to, to starting with a closed G2 structure, the idea is to, to flow in order to, to find the fixed points, which are the parallel uh, G2 structures, which are, uh, and then you get that the metric has holonomy contained in, in G2, okay? So this flow was, was introduced to, to, to try to find 
uh, Olonomy GQ matrix. Okay. Okay, o sea, uh, let, let's start with some, with, with, with Lie groups. Okay. So, we, we come back to the, to the general case, not a specific example, but now our manifold is a, is a Lie group. Hmm? We assume simply connected. And then, well, everything uh, works uh, uh, mostly for homogeneous spaces, actually, but the presentation is, is, is much more technical. So let's stay in, in, let's stay in, in, in a Lie group. But remember that for homogeneous space, this, uh, most of, of, of what follows uh, works. So accordingly, we consider left invariant geometric structures. Mm -hmm. Invariant by the action of, of the group on itself by, by left translate, translation. And we can consider any of the above. Okay. In this case, since uh, the, the, the tensors are left invariant, then T will be a finite dimensional vector space on the Lie algebra. And, and well, also accordingly, the equivalence will be defined using this, if you want, algebraic diffeomorphisms, which are the automorphisms of the Lie group. Okay, so you consider that two, I don't know, metrics are equivalent if they are uh, equivalent via an automorphism of the, of the group, not only a diffeomorphism, okay? To keep everything in the, in the context. And the preferred direction can be any of the both. And so the solitons are called semi-algebraic and you get this, this equation, okay? Since, uh, so the, it's, it's, it's very easy, why? Because the, the tangent space at gamma to this orbit is, is precisely this Lie derivative, but now the field it's not any field, it's a very algebraic field, if, if you want, are this field defined by derivations, okay? They are generalizations of, of linear fields on, on Rn. They are not left invariant because at the identity, they vanish, so, but they are, okay, these fields, defined by, by these automorphisms attached to, to, to a derivation, okay? And, and actually the Lie derivative of the tensor is, is this, is equal to, to, to this very algebraic, it is, this is the action of GLG on the set of tensors. So everything is, is, is very, and well, algebraic solitons are, if you in addition have, have this additional property for the derivation, okay? But as you can see, this is, is, is full of algebra, hmm? all, all in this teal color is, is algebra everywhere. Hmm? And well, the equation is, 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 is very nice because on the left, you have the geometry, hmm? any geometry as above. Hmm? And on the right is, is this term is, is, is very algebraic. Huh? It's, it's, it depends on the derivation of a Lie algebra. And well, the most important is, is the quality part. Uh, okay, so in the, in the Ricci flow or, or Ricci soliton case, uh, Jablonski proved that, that uh, every semi-algebraic is, is algebraic and actually every homogeneous Ricci soliton is, is isometric to an algebraic. So we are, we'll, we'll be uh, talking about only about algebraic Ricci solitons. 
They are called nil solitons in or nil potently groups. And well, there are many, many results on this. Uh, you have uniqueness, so it's a way to, to, to provide a nil potently group, which is it's impossible to have an Einstein metric on a nil potently group. But you may have one of these solitons and it's unique. So it's a it's a way to provide a nil potently group with a with a canonical metric, if you want. And they they maximize this this functional, this richy pinching functional, measuring how far is the metric from being Einstein. And so that's a very nice property of, of solitons, which is independent of the definition. And well, we, we, we have many classification results in, in low dimension by Will and Fernandez Kulma. And as you see, a lot of people, I, I must be forgetting someone, I'm very sorry, uh, have worked on this, on these nil solitons. And we still have, after 20 years, unfortunately, this, this painful question. Uh, we don't know. We we don't we don't know general general obstructions. Just that the nilpotent algebra must be n graded, but um, it's incredible. As usual on nilpotent algebras, you you get to a point that yeah, uh, no no answers or no nice ans answers at least. Okay. Uh, well, sol solitons are unsolvable groups, more general, and we also have uniqueness, so you, you can uh, equip a, a solvable group without an Einstein metric, uh, without admitting an Einstein metric with these sol, sol solitons, especially unimodular solvable groups, for instance. And they are also maxima for this Ricci pinching functional. Uh, this functional is equal to the dimension if and only if uh, the metric is Einstein, right? This is cauchy schwarz huh? But well, at least in these cases, we already know that for some reason we don't, we don't understand, but sol solitons are nice from this point of view. And also, for instance, nice from this other point of view, very different, which is symmetries. Huh? Uh, all these people have proved very, very nice results on, on, on maximal symmetry, eh? that the solve solitons among all left invariant metrics in the given Lie group, they have maximal symmetry. So they are, in a sense, the, the nicest ones. Uh, and well, we also, do, uh, the, the only examples we know are, are sol solitons, uh, uh, but uh, we also have some structural results on, on homogeneous spaces and, and this famous Alevsesky conjecture, one of the main problems in the, in the, in the area, in the field, is, is in, the, in the homogeneous geometry, is that any Einstein homogeneous is, is is actually a, a, a metric on a solvable group. is is very related with this, uh, well, with, with this structural results on 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 sol solid on 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 solitons on algebraic solitons. Okay. Okay. Um, beyond Riemannian geometry, um, we have um, examples on on. Examples of algebraic solitons in the Chen Ricci case, in the symplectic curvature flow case. Uh, as, as you see, we, we found shrinking examples because in, in Riemannian geometry, all solitons which are not Einstein are, are expanding. Okay? But in these geometries, you, can, you may have shrinking solitons in. In the pluriclose flow, for instance, Arroyo and La Fuente uh, found semi-algebraic solitons which are not algebra, algebraic, so this is also different from the Riemannian case. 
And for, for the G2 Laplacian uh, flow, Nicolini found also semi-algebras, which are not algebra, and also a curve, a continuous family of, of solitons on, on a given Lie group. So, uniqueness uh, doesn't hold anymore, at least in, in this case of, of Laplacian. Uh, we also have this shrinking, and it's, it's, it's really uh, interesting that, that this, I mean, as, as an application of these of these algebraic solid, solitons, these shrinking solitons are the only known solutions in gen in general for for the G two Laplacian flow, which explode in in finite time. Okay, so this this can be viewed as as, a, as a, an application of algebraic soliton to the flow. So by now, these are only the, the only known. Solution with the finite time singularity, and well, also Fino Raffero worked on on on, on these uh, Laplacian solitons, and for instance, to to relate with some other property, you have these. They, they are called extremely rich pinch. They were introduced by Brian, closed G two structure. So, are as you see, are the the closed use G2 structure close to be Einstein, in a sense. So they are very special. And we proved with, with Nicolini that, that they are automatically steady uh, Laplacian solid. We, we don't know why, by, by, but this is the, the other way around, right? The, from a very special uh, geometric pinching structure, you get a soliton. Okay, I'm, the time is, so, um, well, uh, underlying all, all this, this point of view of, of algebra solitons is this, this approach that we call the moving bra bracket approach, which is, an approach which allows us to, to apply GIT, geometric invariant theory results eh, as moment map, stratification, uh, uh, stable points, stability, I don't know, uh, null cones. And the idea is, I, I want, this is the last uh, page, to, to say something about this, which is very related to algebraic solitons. The, the idea is that in, on, in the Lie group, you, you have a Lie group and a geometric structure, structure, which is just a tensor on the Lie algebra. And then in the simply connected case, what, what you have is just a Lie bracket, a vector space if you want, fixed, a Lie bracket and a tensor, okay? And then, you may say, well, why don't we fix gamma on the vector space and vary the Lie brackets? Instead of varying the structures, let's vary the, the Lie algebras. And then consider the, the variety. This is an algebraic subset because the Jacobi condition is, is just polynomials. And identify each point in the variety, each mu, with this geometric structure, okay? So you take the simply connected Lie group with Lie algebra mu and always the same gamma as a tensor on the Lie algebra, okay? And then this isomorphism is, 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 is the key part of, of, the, of, this, of the approach. H is giving you an equivalence between these two geometric structures. So, as you see here, you're moving, you're varying, you're, you're obtaining all the structure of, of the same type, right? all the metrics, all the G2 structures, all almost Hermitian structures, if you want. And on the left, you are in the GLG orbit of mu. Okay? So, you are getting all Lie brackets which are isomorphic to mu. 
And then in that orbit, in the isomorphic class of, of mu, you can identify with, with the space of all geometric structure on, on a fixed Lie group. But the variety can be identified with the space of all. Right? All Lie groups with all geometric structures of a given type. And then uh, the, the nice thing is, is that, uh, well, the, the, the usual convergence of, of bracket with the topology in this vector space sometimes gives you very, very nice notions of, of topology of convergence for the geometric structures. Uh, for instance, pointing, pointed or, or Chigel-Gromov or, or, or um, uh, smooth convergence uh, up to diffeomorphism. And a very interesting thing is that you can, with a sequence of Lie brackets, you can go, the limit of a sequence of Lie bracket can be at the boundary of the orbit. So you may get a new lambda, hmm, which is not isomorphic to mu. So this allows, us, uh, this allows you to, to, to have convergence of geometric structures on one Lie group to the geometric structure on a different Lie group, which can be even non-homeomorphic. Non so that's, that's very interesting and, and and the relation with algebra isolitons is that if you translate your flow to brackets, it's called the bracket flow, then you can study the solution on, on, on for this flow now. And the fixed points of this flow are precisely algebra isolitons. So this is something which, which make algebra isolitons very very special and well i think i will stop here thank you okay thank you very much for for a lovely talk um very good okay where's my video so now i hope we will have some questions and some some discussion so because we are almost 70 participants maybe we can uh, maybe if you have a question, you can just write in the chat uh, that you have a question, and I can just call um, each one of you in order. So, let me just know. Okay, so Claudio has a question, so you can start. Sorry, I'm just trying to, to see this. Okay. Uh, yes, thank, thanks a lot, Jorge. I have, I have a couple of questions. So, the first one is... Uh, uh, in the first part, you motivated this uh, the, the interest for, for solitons, like thinking to a flow. And then uh, in the example, in these algebraic examples, you mentioned this uh, property about maximizing, for example, this functional S squared over Ricci squared. I mean, and then you said as a comment, I mean, this means that they are as far as possible from uh, being Einstein in some sense. So would that mean that you, you will not get these solitons by flowing? I mean, they are kind of self-similar solutions to the Ricci flow, for example, but as soon as you move, they are kind of repulsive for the flow? Uh, I, I don't know if I un understood the question. Um, a few, few slides ago, few slides before. Yeah. You, you mentioned in some example in, about the algebraic uh, solitons. Yeah, for yeah. Example, yeah, they are global maxima. So solitons. they are as close as possible to be Einstein. As close as possible. Ah, okay. So maximizing them, yeah. is, uh, they are close. So yeah, because this functional is, is always least or equal to the dimension n and equal, equality holds if and only if it's Einstein. So you are as close as possible. Okay. But um, is the, the, I mean, the Ricci flow is not the gradient flow of this function. That, that's the problem. Right? It's, it's, it's very difficult to, to see the Ricci flow as a, you can, I mean, Perelman did as a, as a, 
as a gradient flow, but uh, you have to consider the 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 the, the homotopy classes. But yeah, yeah, you, you may have a lot of of these um, natural functionals, uh, but if you in some cases of for instance, if uh, this functional is, is not monotone, it's, it's not the always increasing uh, along along the, the Ricci flow on on okay. in the homogeneous case. Sorry, and I have another quick question. Are there also non-existence results? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, yeah. is there some general conjecture about when? they should exist and when they shouldn't well that that depends a lot on on the on the setting but um, is in, in the in the Ricci flow case in the we have this this tricky question that yeah we, we know that many nilpotently algebra do, do not admit but it's it's very hard to to get non-existence results already in this case uh, but um, in, in the other context, um, yeah, we, we also have some 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 Lie groups that we we can prove that there are no algebraic solitons. But sometimes we don't know if there is a, a general soliton. Okay? Of course, algebraic solitons are solitons. I mean, they 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 are solitons. They are just special. But sometimes maybe a, a Lie group can admit a, I don't know, a very exotic soliton, which is not uh, algebraic. But, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we have um, several other questions here. So the next question was, uh, I think I will let Imran Khan ask his question first, and then Fernando, and then Ludwig Tabrowski. So, okay, so Imran Khan, if you have your question. Hi. Uh, my question is uh, that uh, imagining a soliton as a physical object, uh, I have difficulty understanding what does semi-algebraic soliton, uh, how is semi-algebraic soliton different from the normal soliton? Um, well, I can show you the the definition, I mean, I can answer that from a physical point of view, of course, but the, the difference is that if you, if you see, I mean, here you can see the difference that the a general soliton, you can put any field here. Okay. But for the semi-algebra, you can put only these fields which are defined by derivations and from the point of view of, of flowing, maybe it's, it's more clear that the the the, um, the solitons are, are are we say that are those structures flowing in this self-similar way. Okay. Okay. So, for instance, Ricci solitons is when you flow with f of t, a one-parameter family of diffeomorphisms. A semi-algebra soliton is when here f of t are automorphisms of the Lie group. So uh, they are they are diffeomorphisms very special for the Lie group. Since you are in a, in a Lie group, it's very natural to to consider that 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 to ask for automorphisms instead of diffeomorphisms, and that's uh, that's a difference, but the Jablonski's result tells you that 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 in the in the Ricci flow case is is, is more or less the is, is the same. No? Okay, uh, thanks. And there's another general question, uh, if you can answer that, uh, the regarding the Poincaré conjecture. Yeah. Uh, and its solution, which was done by Gregory Perelman. So I just want to ask if you have any idea whether solitons were used in uh, 
that prove or are related to Poincaré conjecture or not? Yes, yes. One of the things that Perelman proved is the, is the non-existence of solitons in dimension three. Yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, the next question was Fernando Rodriguez Villegas. So. Yes, hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, um, no, I have a, a very uh, naive question from an outsider. Um, I always thought that uh, solitons were these things that this guy uh, 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 riding a horse in Edinburgh uh, saw in a canal and that uh, they followed it for whatever long it was. Is this uh, related to, to this? I get a sense that it is, but you didn't mention it, and so I was wondering. No, yeah, that's, that's a problem. In, in PDE, the word soliton is, is, is much older, and it refers to this uh, yeah, solution, courtly debris equations, that does uh, water waves eh, flowing without losing the shape. But yeah, in, the, in differential geometry, Hamilton started to use this, this word in a, in a more general sense that uh, for self-similar solutions, okay? That, that would be the correct name in PDE. But, but is it the case that the PDE solitons satisfy your action? Yeah, I think it yeah, was extremely general. The idea is these water waves that flow without losing its shape. And, uh, Thank you. Okay, so it's, 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 it's the same idea as, as the, in the curve shortening flow, right? that a soliton is, is to flow with the same shape. Yeah, it's, it's, it's related, but yeah. I think PDE people doesn't like that, the use of soliton in this, but it's already 30 years and <laughs> spread. <clears throat> Okay, so the next uh, question is from Ludwig Dabrowski. No, oh, hi, thanks for the world of examples. I have also kind of a naive question. So when you started with examples on the curves on a plane, you spoke about the rigid motions and scalings. And when you went to manifolds, you also had, you, you substituted the rigid motions by diffeomorphies, but scaling remained numbers, okay? Later, they may depend on flow, on time, on parameter t, but they are numbers. Why they are not functions on a manifold? Is there some reason for that? Oh, no, no, because, yeah, to, you, you, you mean like to, to consider conformal metrics? Yeah, that, that would be like a, like a too big uh, equivalence uh, okay. relation, but uh, for, for some pro purposes, right? But in, in the curves, we, we also consider just a scaling by, by, yeah, by a number, right? Right, right. So, so my question was, there must be some reason. There's two, 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 two. Is the group of transaction group would be too big, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, I okay. think so, yeah, okay. yeah, but yes, yes. Thanks. Okay, so, uh, Yalong, Yalong, should you had your hand raised, but did you want to answer? Yeah. Okay, you still have a question? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Thanks. Uh, I, I recall that you mentioned that uh, for the churn rich flow, you constructed the like shrinking type uh, soliton, right? For churn rich solitons? Yeah. yeah. I remember you stressed that you constructed a uh, uh, shrinking soliton, right? Yes. Uh, yes. I also, yes. I think uh, you, you mentioned like uh, in this, uh, uh, for the uh, new, new manifold, like uh, also there are a lot of solitons. So uh, I remember that uh, actually you proved that there's no shrinking solitons on new manifold, right? But for Ricci. Yeah, for rich, for rich, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very different. Yeah. Uh, so, so can you explain uh, what's the reason why, why this this kind of a difference happens? 
Uh, eh, right now. Me <laughs> dice. Eh, eh, yes. Eh, in, in on nil manifolds, you mean? Yeah, on new manifold. Yeah, because for Chen Ricci, is is there is something even more uh, strange that any nil manifold is a Chen Ricci soliton. Uh, okay. So you have to go to to solvable groups to to make sense because uh, on nil, anything is a, is a soliton on on nil manifolds for Chen Ricci is is. It's not a very strong condition. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, for 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 Ricci, you you prove very easily in one line that the the constant c must be uh, positive. That, that so you get uh, always uh, expanding. Okay. But, uh, I, I don't know the a reason to to say that why in this other you may you may get shrinking is 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 because it's is is very different mm -hmm. but right now i i can't just give you a a better explanation okay anyway thank you you're very, you're welcome welcome okay so were there any other questions some Someone else who wants to ask something? Okay. So it doesn't seem so. So, um, yeah, give you a second. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then I would like to thank you again, Pokru, for, for this excellent talk. And I would just remind everybody again that this is a seminar that we will try to continue every week uh, from now on for, for some time to come. And they, there will very soon be a, a kind of schedule that we will put on the web page. And the next uh, seminar is in one week's time, the same time, on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Central European time. And I hope to see all of you here. Then it will be Elisabeth Gasparin who will be the speaker. And I will see you all there. So thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jorge. And thank you, Zacharias. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. See you next week. See you next week. See you. Bye. Bye.